Now, what's up guys? We're back here again. This time what I'm going to be doing is showing or at least explaining the processes of doing both cam seals front and rear and uh, telling you guys the do's and don'ts and what you should look for. Now, before you start, just remember that you have to obviously get this Company 23 tool here and it allows you to hold your crank pulley still while you get somebody else to loosen the bolt which is tightened down to like 75 foot pounds i think it is i think it's a uh, 22 millimeter socket and uh you know you got to make sure you line up your timing marks underneath here and that you know everything lines up timing mark with the cams and the block and then the uh, crank sprocket in the middle has to line up before you remove the belt and remove that so I'm not here to show you guys how to replace your timing belt. There are plenty of videos on YouTube for you guys to see that. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. And I'm going to start with this front piece over here. And uh, yeah. What I did here was I took off the cam sensor, which was a 10 millimeter. I took off the 10 that's holding the dipstick to the assembly. And now I'm going to be taking this entire assembly off in order to access a seal on the inside that also has to be changed. And I believe these are a mixture of 10s and 12 millimeters going all around. So I'll update you guys back when I'm done with that. The 10 on the left side after you move the dipstick, the 10 underneath, I got the seal out and I got the 12 that's on top here and this just slides right out. We're supposed to slide right out. Uh, some little caught on something. Not really sure if I am or not. Don't think this is supposed to be happening. Don't know what I'm caught on. Oh no, nope, just uh, tight fit. Okay. All right. So with that being said, we're going to now change the seal on the back half here with the genuine part. First, I'm gonna clean up this housing because it's pretty mucky, pretty dirty. You can tell there's been a leak here for quite some time. And then I'll be back after that. Now, this piece, I took off the engine, right? That's the cam exposed on the front side. And this is the front piece, and this is the new seal. So I'm going to have all the part numbers down in the description so you guys can, uh, you know, buy this stuff if you have to do the same job. Now, I have to get brake clean and clean out all of that. Use a Scotch-Brite pad and lightly go around the interior and remove any of that nasty sealant that the last person, last owner, put in. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to lightly lubricate the entire circumference of the seal with oil. And I'm going to lightly lube the inside of this with oil, and then I'll show you how to do the back seal as well. Here we have the piece. This is it with the seal installed. Now I just took a small rubber mallet and uh, hit it all around evenly. You could put maybe a flat surface like a piece of wood on top and just hit it in the center. And it'll all go in flush. But... You know, I hit it all around and took my time. I oiled the seal and the inside of the part first before doing so. And now we're going to move on to the back side. Here we have the new seal. I'm going to just coat this in oil. And then we're going to come right back to me placing it on here. So I just put oil on it, rolled it over, just lightly rolled it over, and... That is what she looks like. Nothing crazy, nothing complicated. But you want to make sure you clean the part because I put this entire part through a parts washer and got it clean. Now you can use degreaser and like I said, a, a light cloth. I believe I mentioned that, but use like a light cloth, a microfiber or something. You don't want to use anything abrasive like a bristle brush or sandpaper. You don't want to mess up the mating surfaces, especially on a part like this because I don't think it's available anymore from Subaru. But um, yeah, so I just put some oil in a cap from a bottle and I just dipped my finger and just lightly coated the entire seal and then just 
slowly fitted it to the uh, to the part here. Now it might be kind of hard for you guys to see it, but this is the back of the passenger side head. So I'm going to be looks like take yeah it looks like 12 millimeters. I'm going to be taking those out and then taking off that plate and then changing the seal back there. Now back here there was a lot of oil, a lot of old axle grease. So yeah, I had to kind of wipe some things down. This looked a lot worse than it does now, believe me. So let me just grab the 12 and I'll be right back. I'll just use this all the leverage I need. Tight spot. Long ratcheting wrench. out by hand so they weren't very tight if I'm loosening them by hand like this clearly weren't all that tight so I'm gonna take this bring it out place it somewhere out of the way this one's still on there a bit tight Now I obviously could have taken out the intake uh, pipe, if you will, or intake track, whatever you want to call it, and that would have given me all the room I needed, but I really didn't feel like messing around with the hoses and disconnecting, you know, clamps and whatnot. I just really didn't feel like it. So I'm reaching in here with tools to kind of make up the difference. Hopefully I don't have to, but I don't want to jinx myself, but something tells me I'm going to have to take out that intake track in order to um, take a look at some things, because the way how this bolt is coming out is worrying. Oh wait, it's coming by hand now. So either this hole, this red hole is dirty or slightly, you know the S word, I don't want to jinx it, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I'm getting at. Slowly coming along. And that bolt is now out. Okay, I might have to get a little pry bar. Help me out there. So light. Or I just use a screwdriver. Whatever works best. <sighs> so hopefully you guys saw that. Popped it right out. Gonna reach down here and go get it. So that's that, if you guys can see it. And that is the back of the head open. Now here you can kind of see what I'm talking about, right? This is the piece that was on the back of the head on the passenger side. And it has that black O-ring seal, which looks to me to be fairly okay shape, but things that you want to change all at once so you don't really have to think about it again so I'm gonna clean this up and uh, change that seal so here we have the piece all cleaned up you guys can get a little view of that all cleaned up to you know compared to what it was before and this is the o-ring that came off of it now, sat like that you know obviously it's all angled now because it's been sitting 
under pressure from the two bolts, but look at that, it snapped. Just me trying to take it off, it just snapped right in half. This is nice and brittle, you know? All that heat and, you know, heat and clamping pressure, heating up and cooling down. That'll do that to uh, rubber seals over time, so. Don't be surprised when you have certain leaks in certain places. It's probably just tired out rubber, so. We're gonna replace this seal, we're gonna put fresh oil on that seal, put it around here, and then we're gonna put this back where it belongs. But first, I'm gonna apply some brake clean to the inside uh, orifice where this came from, and just kinda clean out any gunk that's there. And I'm gonna put some fresh oil in there as well, kinda keep it lubricated, cause brake clean, brake parts cleaner tends to dry out everything. So, yeah, you're gonna wanna wait for that to dry completely before putting rubber seals back where they belong because you don't want this to come in contact with brake brake parts cleaner you know while it's still wet and then next thing you know it starts to degrade the seal so it'll defeat the purpose you'll be doing the job twice that's not what we want so let's get that done and I'll be right back sorry about the lighting but there she is it's in now I had to use a hammer like this one, you know, I slipped it in the space and just lightly, you know, you want to make sure you get the bolts uh, threaded in at least like three hole, four hole turns first, kind of line it up by hand and then you want to smack this in lightly in the middle so it all sinks into the head level and then you could tighten it. Now these don't have to be too tight, you just want to go a little past snug, and that should be good. So, now that we have that installed, we're going to move on to the front. Sorry guys, a lot of time has passed, and um, you know, currently here dealing with some stuff myself. But um, just so you guys understand, since the last clip that you saw, months and months have passed, so I apologize. But um, before I forget, do not forget when you're doing your oil pump to place that small O-ring on the block side where the oil pump mounts to the block. There's a small rubber black O-ring. You want to replace that before you put on your new sealant and make sure you're using the right sealant. I'm going to show you guys the specs uh, in, ter in terms of torque specs for each bolt. And it shows you the path of where you're supposed to put the sealant on the new oil pump. So as you see right here, it's telling you everything. You know, exploded view. It's telling you all the torque specs. So you could pause right there. And then you come down here. It's telling you the path. It's showing you the path of uh, where the sealant should go. So just pause your screen right there if you need to. Okay, and moving on. So now that you have all that information, um, two things that I did not really cover in this video, and I apologize, was the passenger side front cam seal because I ended up hitting mine in too far and I had to take it out with a 90 degree pick and buy another seal and go again. So word to the wise, any seals that you're gonna do, always buy two just in case. And you never know if you do it right the first time, in the future you'll at least have a spare seal, you know, so the next time you have another leak or failure, or, you know, crazy things happen all the time. And um, before I forget, the driver's side head on the back, there is a black cap sort of seal so you're going to kind of want to fish that one out too with a 90 degree pick and then just take your time there's going to be a lot of stuff in your way like the wire coming from the battery to the starter i think heater core hoses and another hose that's going from the uh coolant pipe that goes directly to the water pump and then crosses over to the back of like back of the block underneath the intake there's a lot of things that are going to be in your way just take your time you know slow it down and just focus on getting stuff hidden right and um you know, focus on cleaning stuff out before you put the new one in. Lubrication is your friend. Like I said, use Permatex Assembly Lube. It helps a lot. Or you could use motor oil if you want to. And I highly, highly suggest make sure your lighting is on point. Make sure your lighting is on point. 
that's what's most important. If you don't have good lighting and you can't see what you're doing, you can't ensure that everything's gonna be 100%. You're always gonna have that thought in the back of your head, you know, did I do this right? Do I have to do this again? So lighting and patience makes all the difference. And with that being said, thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate you guys and I'll see you next time.